Good morning everyone. So it is currently six days post-op and today I'm going for my first post-op appointment with my surgeon and I think they're going to change the bandages and kind of see what the progress is so far but um, obviously the first day was a bit of a myth like the day that I got back um, from the hospital the pain was just a mad thing like I've never experienced anything like that in my life the pain has gotten a lot a lot better like I haven't taken painkillers for the past three days which is obviously a positive still slightly a bit swollen but um, we're getting a lot more movement in the knee which is good um, just with my sis she is driving me to up my appointment and yeah we'll see what he has to say hopefully good news Coping with the brace, alright? Yeah, it does mind in, I can't lie, but it's just heavy, isn't it? But it's doing its job. Yes. Rest back there. If we're looking at the leg, that leg goes this straight. Mm -hmm. We want to work on getting this leg out straight. Let me drop down. Remember before it was a bit mm -hmm. bent? The bending now. Bending. How much bending have you managed to get? You can keep going. We want to get up to that 90 degrees. Right. And then, the thumb is gently squeezing here, and it's moving the tibia backwards and forwards. So you can sense that feels stable now. Mm -hmm. Remember before it used to move quite a lot? Mm -hmm. So that's good. And then the sideways movement, you can sense it comes to a stop now. Remember before the operation we moved that and it just seemed to keep going. So that's good. Sleeping in the brace. Um, the first night I did, and then after that I know I was sleeping a bit as straight as possible. Do you have a question? Yeah. Me? So, obviously because I'm sleeping and I'm sleeping in one position, it's killing my lower back. Yeah. Is there anything that I can put yes. on my back to like, help it? Well, you can lie on your side, you can put, then break, uh, put the pillow between the legs. Right. That's alright. What, on this side or that side? Both sides. Okay. Right. When I saw the report of what you done, I was like, oh, you had a great time. Mm. You had a great time. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right, that looks very yeah. clean. I know so it looks um, sort of nice. blood stain now, but we'll... To be fair, I thought it was going to be a lot longer than that. So we're only a week, Joe. So. Yeah, only I'm not going to disturb those stereo strips. Because they're all quite intact, aren't they? I don't know whether this one just snaps a bit soggy. You know, it's quite dry, actually. Maybe we can just do that one. Yeah, just replace that one. Yeah. Right, so when that dressing's off now, does your leg go down straighter? Like you can mm -hmm. let it go down? It does, almost. Mm -hmm. What exercise are you doing to get the leg to go straight? So I'm doing the heel prompt, um, and football just gave me a stem machine, like the muscle. Oh, good. For my quads and that. So if you're resting back there, the goal then is to be able to get both knees back out equally straight. Right. So that knee has to then drop down eventually, so it's matching that one to get your normal curve that way, the mm -hmm. hyper extension, we call it. And that just takes some stretching out, and one way, just that one we can take everything off. Just leave all right. that's, yeah. That'll be a small scar. Is then putting this leg on top. A nice lightweight on the leg there. Okay. Just for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, never more than a minute. Just to slowly stretch your leg out and it's squeezing the tissue at the back, stretching it. The fluid comes out of it and resting down again. And now if we take, uh, let's take it off there, if we take this one. Then. Now you can almost touch the bed. You can sense it mm. one go at doing that and it's gone a bit straighter. So that's a way of stretching out. Then it'll sort of creep back again and then it'll You'll work on it again, not get back out straight, just with the heel hangs. And then working on the bend or putting it on a slippery slope. And you're doing that one on a plastic bag? Yeah. Well, I was doing it sitting down. On the floor, yeah, okay. No, like if I'm, so say if I'm sat on a chair and then doing it that way. So you could do it lying on the, on the sofa with your foot on a tray, a sock, and just sliding it up and down on a wooden bit or putting it on the floor and doing it. Mm -hmm on your bed on a plastic bag. So bending is good, the weight bearing is bad at the moment, we said. We just don't want to 
stretch out the inner side. All right, not hurting you. No. Good. Do tell me if I do. Well, nothing's going to be as painful as Saturday, so. No. <laughs> Saturday. Yeah, that was. I haven't felt pain like that. Oh, the, the day after, yeah. Mm. Then that night's sleep. Oh my god. Mm. But to be fair, I haven't taken painkillers in that. I haven't taken anything in that three days, so. Fine, but <laughs> we need to get the knee moving. Right. So taking the edge off the pain with regular paracetamol, mm -hmm. no risk of doing that. It just allows you to push on a bit more. Right. So, yes, it's good to not take painkillers, but then you end up with a stiff knee because you're not pushing through. It's not so much fun. Okay. So we want to get this leg out straight, and you felt when, we, when you did the heel hang then that it was unpleasant to put mm -hmm. it straight. So, um, working on that, taking some analgesics, then you can push through it a bit more. Get up in the morning, take a couple of paracetamol so you're ready for your exercises. Okay. But we want to get this movement going. Stiffness is our enemy with this. Okay. Quite dry now. now. Nice. So that's a bit mm. indented. The scar is going um, obviously here to here. That's good and clean. And then your small scar on the inner side for the medial. And what was this one for? We're going to tunnel up the tibia to make a channel for the ACL. Right. Up through the femur. And then the wire comes out at oh, the top okay. there. Got you. And there's a big long missing needle. And then you pull the graft up through. Nice. That's on the wire. <laughs> drilled up the leg. That sounds lovely. <laughs> Glad you're asleep. <laughs> this literally's got an eye on the end of the needle, so you can pull your lead sutures through and pull the graft up. That doesn't feel nice. Mm. So we want to take that discomfort away. That's mm. why taking painkillers and we put the dressings on in flexion. Thank you. Got it in the right position for me. It is covered for the next three or four days, mm. and then everything can just soak off. And at ten days, the wound mm. should have sealed itself. Mm. Yeah. And then you'd have a couple of spare dressings to put on just to cover it up and then you want to leave it open to the air after 10 days. A bit more. So we want to work on this, and I would encourage you to take some painkillers so you can do that. Stiffness is our enemy with this because we've operated on the, a, a, a stiff knee to begin with, and then we don't want this double scarring. So you're going to get your leg down straight. That one. I'm putting the leg on top there. So this is called pleasurable discomfort, right? This sensation you're feeling, it resembles pain, but it's not. It's a stretching discomfort as the leg goes out straight, but only do 15, 30 seconds, never more than a minute, otherwise you then hurt it again. Wow. Three or four goes of this till you feel it's really reached that bit, and each time you've done it, you've done your 30 seconds, then you take your feet off again, just put it down, and then do some bending on it. So you've loosened it up again the other way. Yeah. Bend it up again now. So it just becomes easy. And once it's got moving, it you can almost win better. So taking the mm -hmm. pain away. To be fair, the only place it hurts is where the cut is. Yes, because it's stretching and that's yeah. where we've... Mm -hmm. So that's, you've just got to stretch through. Okay. So this is not doing anything to the ACL. Mm -hmm. That's a fast pivoting, moving thing. Locking the leg out, tighten those for me. Toes back, lift it up. Good, and then this side, lock it out, lift it up, you can tighten those so you force your knee down on the bed, toes back towards you, trying to tense those muscles, and I'll lift it up by the big toe, lift, lift it up now, hold it up there, right, keep it there in the air, you can keep it there as I'm releasing, hold it up, right, that's pretty good. It's almost easier when someone's holding it up there that you can keep it up in the air but just and then go down. So you're forcing the knee down, toes back towards your head, trying to stretch your heel away, trying to force it into extension to just practice on that leg. Knee down, you're sort of bananaing the leg out and then you can lift it up. So relax it down, then you're doing the same signals on that leg. Force the knee down, um, you let that one relax, then you force the knee down, heel away from you, toes back to your head, try and lock it out and lift it up. Good, hold it up there. Keep it up, keep it up. That's good. 
So you can do that as much as you like, but again the painkiller is just to take the edge off that. So you can do a thousand of those a day, that's fine to get the muscles firing. So that's not doing any, anything else to the knee. But that's already going straighter. You can sense you're almost touching the bed. Mm -hmm. Normal is to get your heel that much off the bed. Maybe we're going to call it two finger breaths off the bed. This one almost will go there. You see it passively, it'll go. Mm -hmm. You can see your knee down, the heel's coming up that much. You've just got to then eventually actively do it. Um, tighten again. You've got to get those firing. Put your hand on there a minute and tighten. You feel something's there. Mm -hmm. and your hand on this one, tighten that one so you can sense that one doing it. And then you send the same signals down that leg and fire that one. This may be a week or two before you fully get your straight leg lift. So you're right on target, it's where we wanted to be at this point. Wound healed, um, pain under control, you learning to bend the knee. When you say 90 degrees, that's like there, yeah? Uh, yes, sort of there. There. This 90. Convention is zero is straight, bending up 30, 40, 90. Obviously, you bend more than that after, but you want to just get to 90 by the two week point. Right. That's your challenge. Challenge okay. accepted. <laughs> Happy? Yeah. This is good day to day changing the dressing. You see that it's going to heal, and you can see that it will bend, and you can sense that it's tighter than it was. It's often after two weeks that things really start to improve, that suddenly the stiffness has gone, the swelling's down a bit, and you sort of take off a bit more. Yeah, because I was the only thing I was concerned about. I was just like, is it still supposed to be this long? Still, this is good. This is good. Oh, so it's better. Right, than what we're it's on a better to... end of a spectrum from yeah. the swelling. We can see a lot more than that. We want all the swelling to have gone by six weeks. The muscles wasting a bit, which makes the knee almost look a bit bigger. Wow. Um, you've got the puffiness around the knee. You're resting without the brace to get rid of some of this localized swelling here. The back leg up against the wall vertically. If you've got a bed next to the wall, that's another good option. Right. So your legs up high, you're pumping your calf up and down, and after 10 minutes the legs kind of drained a bit. No, this is good. Cleaned up nice, that one. Can I ask you actually, can I, can I fly? Yeah. Oh, I can. When are you thinking? Like, the of July? Yes, e easy by after six weeks. You can fly before then. Okay. Just take aspirin before you fly. Hopefully I can wait there by then. Right? Yeah. We have said, right, timing, so we've said April, six weeks takes us to the end of May. We said non-weight bearing for the uh, first four weeks, then you're going to be partial weight until six weeks. That's because of the root repair, where you attach the root down. Patella mobilisation is good, and hopefully the physio will be doing that, both up and down and sideways, to keep that from scarring up. Mm -hmm. uh, massaging the tissue, mobilising it, so it doesn't get stuck down. But that's gone nicely straight now. And you get those muscles firing, you want to see that work before you leave. So that's good. This way of someone holding your foot up here and then you hold it up in the air, you keep it there. Quite another way of getting the muscles to fire rather than to, to initiate it is really hard to get it mm -hmm. to start. Yeah, no, this is good. It is dull at this point, there's not much you can be doing. But you're getting the muscles firing, you're working on the bend, and working on getting the leg out straight. And then the brace when you're up and around, your friend. Hey, yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'll lift your leg up. <laughs> Nearly got it. Right. Yeah, go ahead and put the top ones on. Good. Then using your hands to do it. So you put your heel on the slippery bag. Put your hands on here underneath the hinges there. And now you're lifting it. You're dragging the knee upwards and the heel has to follow. And you're pulling it with your own hamstrings. Mm -hmm. And then down again. Right, but pull with your hamstrings in. Try it without the hands. So it's not as easy, or you can get more, if you're lifting it up, then your foot has to follow, and that gives you more discomfort. It's already getting there a bit more. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine, you're taking the pain, because you want to get this moving. Okay. The stiff knee is hard to get out of, so we've got to win the scar tissue, we don't want to win the battle and heal too soon. We want to get the movement going, but not sideways movement, hence the braces on. Yeah. So that's got to heal tight, mm -hmm. but we want the other tissue around it to allow it to bend. The brace if you can, if you're lying back and your leg is up against the uh, up against the, the wall, up nice and high, if you're lying flat on your back and your leg's up here, then that really helps drain the leg down. Let's uh, get you shoes on and see how if you are on your crutches. Does that work? Yeah. 
Or is your other foot underneath it? Oh, I figured that one out the other day. Because I went to the toilet in the middle of the night and I couldn't get my foot back in the bed. And I was sat there for ages and then I just done that. Switched on, Tim. Oh. Switched on. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That's pretty good, racing around. <laughs> Well, I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy with that. Not gonna lie to you. Um, so the first two weeks, he said, that obviously there's not really gonna be much going on. Um, it's just gonna be focusing on flexion and extension of the knee. Um, so yeah, just gotta do my exercise really. But now moving forward, I'm just gonna have to take a bit more paracetamol in order to get my knee to the next stage if that makes sense so i can push through the pain but yeah i think we're on course we're we're where we want to be right now and the scars look wonderful i wasn't expecting them to look that neat to be fair so we've done all right and yeah my next pre-op is i think 15th of may obviously i'll keep you updated in the meantime as to what happens in between then but again thanks for watching thanks everyone for your support and i'll catch you in the next one